I'm Ben and this is Hyperfine, Resources and Tutorials for Architects by Architects. Today we're in Revit, we're talking about Revit roofs. And I've got 19 different roof types and variations that I'm going to cover in about 11 and a half minutes. So you need to have some understanding of how to build a roof, but I'm going to show you the Revit roof tips and tricks to build all these different ones uh, quickly and efficiently in a nice clean model. The best part is that when this tutorial is done, you can head over to hyperfinearchitecture.com check out the resources page and you can download this exact file and you know see how I built the model and copy it over into your own file. Um, it comes with the 3D view obviously and then a roof plan and a floor plan showing the outline of the roof above. Uh, and then while you're there you can check out the Revit Pro course which is my full-length course talking about how to use Revit for residential construction. So you can see we've got very basic stuff like gables and hips, we've got dormers, mansards, hip and valley roofs, Dutch hips, Greek returns, all these basic things you're going to probably do in your project or learn how to combine them in your own project. Uh, enough talk, let's get started. And one more quick note before we start, a lot of the shortcuts that you'll see me use in this video are custom, so if they don't work for you um, right out of the box, you can download my shortcuts. I've included them with the roof file. You can also get those um, on hyperfinearchitecture.com slash resources. Just check out the description below for all the links, and now let's get started. A gable roof is this A-shaped roof, it doesn't matter what orientation it is, and a butterfly is basically inverse. So to create this, take your roof, select any two of the lines that are opposite, define the slope, set your slope right here, and you've got a gable. To make it a butterfly, you basically just give it a negative slope, which you can do over here. Now it's a butterfly roof. If you want it to be offset, so if you want the ridge not in the center, but you want the same slope, you can select your roof, edit the footprint, take either of the side, and change the offset. Now you can see it's the same slope, but the ridge has moved to the left. If the pattern on your roof doesn't align, just remember that patterns on roofs or walls or wherever are items you can select. You can rotate them, and you can align them. And that's the way you want it to look. A hip roof is the style where all four sides slope up. To create this one, you select all all sides of your profile and make sure that the defined slope is on. Typically the short end will be sloped less than the large end to make a hip roof. These are dormers, so we'll start with a gable roof. We'll make these gable dormers and the shed dormer. It's called a shed dormer because it's got a shed roof, which is another name for a monopitch roof. So we're going to start with a short little roof like this. You can use the roof join tool select the back edge and select the face of this one it'll join the other way you could do it is to edit the footprint drag this one all the way through so it goes through and make sure it's joined then we'll go to our roof plan we'll draw a detail line right there and right there just to mark it we'll edit the footprint and we'll select those lines Make sure that they don't define the slope. Delete that one. And now we see we've got the same shape. On this back side, we'll use the same tool. So we'll use the Join Roof tool. We'll select that top edge right there. We'll select that face, and it joins up. Then we'll select our dormer walls, attach top base, and select the roof. Now you can see it goes up. Attach top base, join attach top base, join. We still have to cut holes in the main roof for the dormers. So to do that, we'll go to the architecture tab. We use the dormer tool. We'll select the roof we want to cut. And then it says pick roof wall edges. So we'll pick that wall. We'll pick that wall and that one. And then we'll select that roof. If it doesn't line up perfectly, just use your trim tool. And there it is. If you made your dormer join the main roof with that join tool right here, you can unset it by clicking the same button. And you have to use the dormer tool in order to cut the roof that way. You could also cut the roof yourself in footprint, but you have to have done the modeling of the roof. Remember where we did this dormer, we actually modeled the footprint like that. So this method only works if you have modeled the dormer and footprint. So we're in the footprint. We're selecting all these walls. We have to go in 3D. We'll select that edge and that edge. 
you see we get that same kind of shape. Trim those, make sure these do not define the slope. And now that roof is cut. And now we've got two dormer holes, sort of the same thing, done different ways. Intersecting roofs are just what they sound like. It's any roof where you get this 90 degree angle. Uh, you could do it as two roofs, but it's more simple if you do it as one roof. You just follow the footprint of your floor plan. When you edit the footprint, you're going to make a gable roof on this part, and then a gable roof on this part, and that will give you your intersecting. And the reason that works, it's better, is because then your eaves all align, and it makes it easier to add fascias. You could also make this front part a hip, and it'll still work. Or you can make the whole thing a hip, and it would still work, and it will still keep all the eaves in alignment. If you have a gable roof with a bump out, you have to do it with two separate roofs. You can see the wrong way. You'll end up with this part back here where it can't attach because we have the we have the overhang here. The footprint is actually a, a foot past the wall, and since it can't overlap, this portion right here doesn't get covered with a roof. So this one is done the correct way. And if you guys just download the file, you'll can see you know more clearly what how this one's wrong and how this one is right. So to do it, we need two roofs. So we've got the main roof, which you can see overhangs by a foot. We will turn this one into a gable by selecting those two sides and making it a slope. And then you can see the footprint of this roof extends all the way back to that wall. We'll edit the footprint. And we'll define the slope. And now if we just select this one, we can join and make that line go away. If you have a bump out, but the roof is in this orientation, so it's not the bump out is not on the gable side, this is the gable side, then you can do it with one roof. So if you edit your footprint, then you just make sure that you only select, you know, we'll select that end and we'll select the furthest end. That will work. If we select both sides, this is going to break the roof sort of like how that other one is broken, and then you're going to have to do the same thing on that portion. So if your bump out is on the non-gable side, you can do it with one roof, and it'll work like that. If you have a gable bump out, you can add some Greek returns, which are these things right here. They're just little roofs. The key is that uh, the side against the house should stay flat. These two sides, you can give them a slope, whatever you want. And this side, that's along the outside edge of the roof, should have the same slope as the main roof. So you can see that's 9 and 12, and this roof is 9 and 12. Then go into an elevation or 3D view. Make sure that those eaves right there line up. And then you can join the roof. A salt box is a roof that has the same pitch, but the, the ridge is not center line. So on a typical gable roof, the ridge would be right in the center where this red line is. If you want to move it to one side or the other, you have to move up the plate height on either side. And the way you do this is just, uh, we already showed it with the butterfly roof, but you select one of your, you select one of your footprints and you do an offset. So we'll just do two feet. And now you can see the ridge has been pushed forward to that side. Mansard and bonnet roofs, another two types that you have to do two roofs. A mansard is this one. It's where it gets very steep and then shallow. And then a bonnet is the opposite. It starts out shallow and gets steeper. So we're going to use the roof cutoff offset tool. We'll select our main roof here. We'll give it a slope, something greater than 12 and 12. So 14 is good. We'll set the cutoff level to level three. And we'll say offset is minus four. So four feet below level three, the roof is going to get cut off. So you see it makes that hole right there. I've got another roof right here. We will give this one some slopes. I think I used nine on this side and six on this side. Then we just have to move it down so it's in the right place. And then we can join them except that line will still always be there because the slope is changing. So you will see a line in your roof plan. And the bonnet roof is a similar process. All these get a slope, something shallow, so 4 and 12. I've got the cutoff level a lot lower, so minus 9. And then we will give this one a slope as well.
and move it down so that it joins in the right place. I had already set up the profiles beforehand, but you also want to make sure that the profiles line up with those lines right there. And this is the bonnet roof. This is a clipped gable or a jerkin head roof. So what we're going to do is start with a regular gable roof with a nice steep slope. We'll edit the footprint and the two sides. We'll give them a slope as well to turn it into a gable. We'll make the slope shallower than the main roof. And we use this right here, offset from base, same as we did with the salt box roof. And then you get a clipped gable. All right, this is a hip and valley. So it's basically got a hip roof on each side. This is good for your big, irregular shape McMansion kind of things. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is create a similar. We'll create a level two. We'll use this tool, this uh, pick walls tool. We'll set our offset to one, our overhang to one foot. And then we'll just tab to get all the walls. You see it automatically gave all of them a slope, which is what we want. We'll hit OK, and there's our hip and valley roof. The benefit of using the pick walls tool is if we move a wall, the roof goes with it. This roof form is called a gambrel, and you could do it with four separate roofs or three separate roofs for each little part of the slope, but this is a good place to use the roof by extrusion tool. So we're going to go to our roof plan. You need to make a reference plane and I like to set it at the same depth as my overhang. So if I want the overhang to be one foot, I'll make this reference plane one foot from the exterior wall. Give it a name, roof profile, so it's easy to find. Then you have to come into some elevation view that's uh, perpendicular to it. We'll create a new roof. We'll pick that reference plane. We'll set it to level two, it doesn't really matter. And now we just draw a profile. And so we're gonna set the center point, we'll say it's right about there, and then you give it um, a steep slope, and then a less steep slope. We'll mirror that, and then a profile, you don't want to close it out, you just keep it open like that, and that's our roof. Now you can see it started at the right place, it started where our reference plane was, but it made it really really long because this view is so big, so you can set the extrusion end here and I'll just make that 26 because my house is 24 feet tall or 24 feet long. We'll take these, we'll attach that, and that's our gambrel roof. And this one's called a Dutch hip. It's where you've got a gable roof that doesn't go all the way to the ends and then uh, some portion here is covered up with a hip roof. So we're gonna need three separate roofs, one, two, and three. We'll take our main roof, we'll edit the footprint, and we will give it a gable in this direction at 9 and 12. I already had some walls there that were attached to the top. Then we'll make this one into a hip. We'll edit the footprint, so no slope there. These two slopes on the side have to be the same as the main roof, so those are 9 and 12. This one right here can be shallower, so that's a 6. And then now that that one works, we can just go into a top view or the roof plan and uh, do a mirror and find our center point which is right about there and now this one's not joined so select join and there's our Dutch gable and that's it 19 different roof types and variations in about 11 and a half minutes I hope you found this helpful if you got any questions leave a comment or come visit my site and send me an email thanks for watching